Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting the like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. Now, today's first story comes from a deleted user who says, Our threesome broke me. Female 35, male 37. Throw away. Even though I'm absolutely certain my husband would figure out it's about us if he ever came across this post. Also, before I get started, I am not interested in leaving my marriage. Our relationship is otherwise loving, respectful, kind, and balanced. Now to the story. This turned into a long diary-like post. My apologies for the length. Me, 35 female, him, male 37, married 16 years. We had a threesome. Two, actually, with the same person. I set it up. It's always been a fantasy of his, and although I was on the fence, there were things I wanted to explore too. We lost our virginity to each other, so our outside experience was very limited. I went on my first solo vacation earlier this year. I don't know if it was the whole absence makes the heart grow fonder or what, but my husband and I were like horny teenagers again when I got back. That's when the whole threesome thing really took off. I set up the dating apps, I wrote what we were looking for, I initiated all conversations. Once I confirmed our match was 100% on board, he joined the chat. He let me lead because in his words, he was happy either way. I've always been bi-curious and he's fantasized about threesomes. It seemed like the only way to flesh it out. We met a few women in person. Our approach was conservative. Talk, go on a date, go from there. Everyone was great about discussing boundaries and I felt safe. We chose one woman because I didn't want to manage multiple external partners. The first encounter was great, mostly for them. There was equal attention between all parties, but I was extremely nervous and uncomfortable. Nothing felt enjoyable to me, but they both came and my husband and I went home. He was very affectionate and encouraging. I chalked my discomfort up to first time jitters. The second encounter was two rounds. The initial date was amazing. Dinner, sightseeing, drinks, great conversation. I legitimately liked her. Round one, I was more open, but still nervous. I realized then that I wanted to experience a woman on my own, not with an audience, my husband. I felt awkward and inexperienced and embarrassed. They again got along well, great chemistry. He finished in me and she and I took a shower together. If the night had stopped there, everything would have been fine. Round two is what broke me. It was late. We were all staying in the hotel this time, the three of us, in a king size bed. I didn't want to sleep next to her, so my husband was in the middle. At some point when I was mostly asleep, I could tell they were messing around, just the two of them. I froze. This was a boundary that he knew about, but I didn't discuss it with her because I trusted him. I don't want to wake up to you two messing around. He asked my permission to have sex with her. I should have said anything other than sure, but I was legitimately frozen. I don't know what else to describe it. Couldn't move, couldn't speak, paralyzed by something. I still don't know what. I was lying on my stomach at the edge of the bed while they fucked. I could see their shadows on the wall and I heard everything. She said I was a lucky woman as she came the third time. Something I've never been able to do. And he finished. It made me sick. Right there, I finally got my senses back and ran to the bathroom and was sick. She offered to leave. I'm sure it was awkward, but I asked her to stay. We gave her a ride home in the morning, hugged goodbye. On the ride back home, my husband and I talked. He made a comment about how the second round was good for his ego. He's lucky if I come at all, let alone multiple times. I sobbed for hours after we got home. I don't know why it hurt so much. My husband was gentle and kind to me after, apologized repeatedly for violating the boundary and for the ego comment. It broke me deeply, but I felt there was nothing to forgive. I set myself up for this. She ended things a couple of weeks later. She said I wasn't ready and she's right. It's been about four months since the incident I call round two. I cannot let it go. How can I measure up to that? How can he be satisfied with me anymore? He has reassured me whenever I brought it up, which was only a couple of times because I don't want to burden him with this. 
It's messed me up to the point where I almost have no sex drive and I'm numb when he's inside me. I miss our sex life. How do I move on from this experience? The OP adds a bit more additional information. They said last night, more of the same. He does seem genuinely remorseful. He apologized again, but doesn't know how to make it right. I'm not entirely sure either. I did say he needs to seek me out more. A lot of the affection in our relationship is one-sided. I seek him for hugs, hand-holding, quality time, etc. He reciprocates, but rarely initiates. What I'd really like to hear is, I cheated. I want him to own it for long. I gave him about 15 minutes to read the post and top comments and asked if he noticed the theme. Crazy how it took a boatload of internet strangers to help confirm what I knew, but couldn't admit. But I still don't think he grasped the gravity of it. Today is a little different. This was all over text. He threw the shower thing back in my face, even though there are texts well beforehand saying he was okay with she and I having some alone time, as long as he was in the room, and he also watched. He also reminded me that I said okay when he asked permission. I saw red and sent a barrage of angry messages. No name calling, just a lot of F-bombs about violated boundaries, lack of awareness, and overall selfishness. He hasn't replied yet. I'm not innocent in this. I really, truly acknowledge that, and like I said, if we had ended the evening after round one in the shower, I'd be completely interested on more threesomes, but I saw the side of him that couldn't give two shits about me when he has something to gain. All while I'm in an incredibly vulnerable place. A place where he should encourage, protect, and advocate. So hell no, not giving him that opportunity again. I know my marriage will never be the same. Maybe in the long run, that's a good thing. Now for me, I always feel like whatever I say in these situations is going to be skewed because I just know I could never deal with a situation like that. My brain wouldn't be able to deal with any kind of like threesome, open relationship or or anything like that. So, so I know I wouldn't be getting myself into it. And for me, you know, you simply had a boundary here and he crossed it. Yes, he did ask for your permission, as you said, but I think it's quite easy to tell when when a partner is uncomfortable in a situation. And for me, I feel like he must have seen that at the same time. And I just feel like he's crossed that boundary. And I like for me, like I said, I'd never get myself in that situation anyway, but I don't see, I can never see any way coming back from that, you know? And I happily admit, maybe that's just the me situation, of course, but that's the way it is for me. Just remember all Cap says, I think your body is trying to tell you something in quotes. I was extremely nervous and uncomfortable. Nothing felt enjoyable to me. I was more open, but still nervous. I felt awkward and inexperienced and embarrassed. I froze, paralyzed by something. Ben says, this just isn't for you. You shouldn't force your body to do this anymore. Next commenter says in quotes, it was a fantasy of his and I was on the fence and then says, for the love of God, why do people have threesomes if they aren't 100% into the idea? Even then, it can irreparably fuck up a relationship. If one party isn't 100%, it's almost a guarantee. I don't think this is something you can move on from. You would just have to live with the knowledge of your husband having sex with and enjoying different women. Susie Hammond says, We'd just like to say, coming from someone who's had almost the same thing happen to me, it doesn't even get better in your head. The feeling of deep betrayal never goes away. Anything that changes will be how your husband goes from caring and apologetic to annoyed that you'll still be hung up on it for a long time. If you don't plan on leaving your marriage over your own husband breaking the boundaries you set in place, you have to come to terms with yourself knowing that you will have a thorn in your side forever. And one more comment from Glad Regret who says, This will probably get buried, but you probably need to treat this like he cheated on you. Because he did. Before he asked you to have sex solo with her and you said sure out of panic, he was fooling around with her. Yeah. He broached your trust the same as any other betrayal. He's shown a selfish side that I'm guessing you weren't 100% aware of. So add to the betrayal. You lost some respect because he was disrespectful. So to get over that, you both need to call it what it was and work through it as cheating. It will be uncomfortable and awkward. I see you're a people pleaser. So it's going to be work for both of you. Sorry your good time got marred by round two. It sucks that you thought you had the security to explore and his selfishness shot that to hell. Hope you're able to get back to happy and exploring your sexuality. 
The OP comes in with their update and says, I deleted my original post, but I'm sure it lives on somewhere. Long story short, I came to Reddit two weeks ago to hash out some feelings I had following our female, female, male threesome, July 2023. My husband broke a boundary by having a twosome with the other woman that started while I was sleeping. It felt like infidelity right in front of my face. Thousands of people reacted to the post, most stating that his actions were cheating. Another large portion believed I gave consent because my husband asked my permission and I froze and did not say no. Many people called me stupid. I can understand all perspectives. I agree it was cheating. He don't ask to change a boundary in the act of breaking it. He understands that now. Hindsight is 2020. While I disagree with him believing he had consent, I forgive him. He has since genuinely apologized and is remorseful. I agree that a threesome was stupid for us to do and that none of us three was ready for a threesome. I lack a spine and they lack impulse control. In my original post, I said our marriage was otherwise good. I truly mean that. We are not perfect, but our relationship was respectful, kind, loving, and balanced. We discussed the threesome for months, going over feelings and potential negative outcomes, but felt the benefit outweighed the risk. Stupid, I know. Again, hindsight is 2020. I spoke with a marriage counselor. I explained how I feel traumatized, how my body doesn't respond to my husband since that night and how I desperately want to stay and leave at the same time. I started looking at apartments and embraced the thought of having space to heal, but my heart was breaking too. In a nutshell, the counselor said leaving is the easy thing to do. She didn't blame me for wanting to walk away. The pain is real and living like this is hard. The harder thing would be to stay and work to repair the damage and rebuild the trust that we had for so many years. I'm going to lose a ton of karma for saying this, but... I choose to stay and rebuild. My marriage is worth saving and my opinion matters more than the words of strangers. I will continue individual therapy and we will see a marriage counsellor. And no more threesomes. What a shit show. And many speculating that this one just isn't over as yet. Questioning about how things move on in the future. Will the husband want more threesomes? Want to still explore his sexuality? Etc. Etc. But now... I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from the unpolitical who says, Friend lost out on winning a thousand dollar lotto ticket because of me. He's crying over money and I don't feel guilty. And this was split across two subreddits off my chest and casual conversation. It starts... I'm part of a specialized friend group where we all share the same hobby. Not really a hobby, but I don't want to give out personal identifying information if I state what it really was. I was really excited to join this group as I've been an avid hobbyist for over six years. I got to meet the entire group, minus Mike, and we all got along great. It was an easy transition into the group and I was having a ton of fun. Finally, about a month after joining, I met Mike. Mike was okay. Pretty tough to get to know, like pulling teeth, but I just kind of ignored it and kept moving on with everyone else. Meanwhile, Mike was really inconsistent with showing up for the twice a month group meeting, so I didn't really get to know him. Throughout the years, Mike had an infamous birthday party that he would invite the group to, except for me. The first year I was okay with it because I had just joined and was about two weeks in. Second year, I forgot about it until everyone was talking about it and then asked me why I didn't go. Well, I wasn't invited. Third year, same thing. I wasn't invited. So that one stung a little and I made it my mission to really try to get to know him a bit more. However, it was never reciprocated and proved to be a difficult task. The problem was the guy runs hot and cold. He's overly dramatic on some days and quiet as a mouse on other days. One time he'd get mad if you hug him. Another time he'd be in your face all excited, telling you the latest new gadget he got. And the next time you see him, he's the complete opposite. Super huggy and barely talks. You'll ask him questions about himself and he will either give you one word or vague answers. This is not just to me, but to everyone. And you never know which mic you will get on any given day. I finally asked a group about him and their thoughts and they all said exactly what I said down to the letter. I followed up with, why is he with this group? Technically, 
He was with the starting group members and has never left, so everyone just tolerates him. For our meeting just before his birthday, I got him a card and wrote him a nice sentiment and bought a $10 worth of scratches. Bought it with me and he didn't show. Came home, told the hubby that I was disappointed and a little mad that once again he doesn't show and that holds back the group dynamic for the evening. Also, he wasn't there for the third time in a row, which is also a rule break within the group. But out of my frustration, I decided to scratch them off myself. To my surprise, every card was a winner. Technically won $1,012. I was so excited. This is the fourth year and he celebrated his birthday month in August. He didn't invite me again, but at this point, I'm no longer offended or hurt by it. I didn't want to go. It's almost mid-September and he's endlessly complaining on social media right now on how broke he is from the two parties he threw. Now his car needs repairing, totaling $1,000 and he's basically crying for anyone to donate some money. I keep laughing at his posts because had he shown up to our meeting, he would have had the money to pay for his car repair. Also, no one in the group knew I bought a card and that I had some winning lotto tickets. A relevant comment from that post that says he wrote in our private group chat asking for some financial help. I responded, I'm praying for you right now. Honestly, if he was a nicer person, I would have held onto the card and lotto tickets for him. We have a meeting tonight and he's not going even though someone offered him a ride. Someone's mentions a comment about they should tell him and Opie says he seems like the type that would hold a grudge or go off on a rant about how he has owed the money. Again, he's super dramatic and there is no telling how we react to the news. The OP does update their post and says, not sure if anyone remembers or cares about my previous post from a few months back, but I have an update. One of the updates that happened in my previous post was that his aunt gave him $1,500 to get his car fixed. He went shopping and bought a dog and a $200 outfit. So he still doesn't have a car, but I belong to his social media. And he easily gets around town and out of the city, so he has some type of transportation but I know it's not his own car that needed repair. Now onto an update that happened Wednesday. So this past week, our secret Santa gift exchange. Wouldn't you know it, I got him and he got me. He didn't show up, so now I'm without a gift exchange. I just said in my head, screw it. I was prepared for this and bought something that I liked, which were more lottery tickets. I scratched them off in front of everyone and won $75. Super exciting. Everyone blasted it on social media. He contacted me this morning saying that he couldn't make it last night because his dog was sick and he had my gift ready. He was excited to receive the $75 because he really needed it. I didn't respond. Meanwhile, he posted on social media that he was out with friends that night, so I guess he forgot that we are connected on social media. Last night, we had a special meeting that was pre-planned for months. We did the Secret Santa exchange earlier in the week because we knew we wouldn't be able to celebrate it last night. He shows up, gives me a big hug, chit chats in the most friendliest way ever, which he has never done with me before, so it looks and feels like someone completely sucking up. He eventually asks me directly for the money and doesn't even have the gift he's supposed to give me with him for the exchange. It's not like he had a backpack or a bag that it was in. He says, okay, great. So where is the money I was to win for my gift exchange? I said, oh, don't worry about the gift exchange. I'm fine. And I walked away. That's all I said. It didn't even make complete sense to me when I thought about it later, but it left him dumbfounded. He tried to complain about it to the others in the group, but they were just not having it. With no collaboration, they all basically said the same thing. You hardly ever show up, and when you do, you are not 100% in. You rarely talk to OP when she is here, and now you want her to hand over $75 for a gift you were not even here for. She had nothing to open and was left out. She owes you nothing. I have a feeling that this will not be the last I will hear of it, but I will stand my ground. Thanks for reading. On the back of that one, someone says, the gall of someone to turn up and ask for money, all for just $75 as well. No shame at all. OP responded saying, lol, that's how I felt. We've had somewhere around nine meetings since my last post and he only came to one. The one where we all picked secret Santa names. For him not to show up, was not surprising because he's insanely infrequent but it did suck that everyone had a fun gift to open but me i was really looking forward to it but i had no issues with enjoying mine and i still had a really great time that night someone says i wonder what kind of reaction you'd get if he knew about the thousand dollars opie says i had a feeling that he would have gone way into the dramatics if i told him about the 1k 
He's just a draining person to begin with, so keeping that quiet felt like the best option. And it was great. I had a bill that I was trying to pay off forever, and that covered it. When we had a gift exchange on Wednesday, I knew I would have everyone's support if I won anything. I thought the most I would get would have been a free ticket, but $75 wasn't bad at all. That's gas or a week's worth of groceries for me, so no complaints. Someone says, imagine surrendering your self-respect over $75. Opie says, exactly, which made his chatty conversation with me super disgusting. I was creeped out and grossed out all at the same time. It was so obvious that all I was thinking was that I desperately wanted to leave his presence in the conversation. So I did with my weird comment. Someone says, can I buy some lotto tickets for you to scratch off for me and split the proceeds 50-50? Lol, I need your lotto luck. Opie says, actually, I keep buying them at Walmart by my house when leaving the store. I normally end up with some type of winnings, but I don't consistently play all the time. I've always loved giving lottery tickets as gifts because no one ever gets deflated when receiving it. Plus, it gives them the hope to win something. That dude, like that comment said, the goal to turn up and and do that and ask for the $75. It would make my skin crawl, someone doing that after being so shitty to you for all this time. And I was trying to guess what kind of hobby it would be. My first thought was instantly D&D. We get like a, across our local pub, there's a D&D meeting. I'm, I'm always tempted, you know, but they advertise in our local pub of, you know, getting together. And there's always a big table of them on Monday who all get together and have a D&D group. And it's always tempting to get involved. But and that's the kind of vibes it was giving me. I could just picture them across the road from me. But the dude in this story just sounds like a bad person to have a part of your group. But there was a lot of comments on this one saying about how, you know, lotto tickets or scratch cards or whatever are a bad gift. <laughs> you know, gambling and all that kind of thing. And I had to chuckle because, you know, it happens within my family or used to anyway. But like around sort of Christmas time, <laughs> I could just feel the comments now. Around Christmas time, my mum, as well as getting us normal sort of gifts and stuff, she would get us a little card each. But for uh, like when we had our Christmas dinner and stuff afterwards, and she'd get, we'd all get like a scratch card each, just as a bit of fun, you know. And usually, someone at the table would win something big. I've seen a couple hundred pounds, seventy pounds, here and there, you know. And I always get the feeling when people say, gambling at the Christmas table, <laughs> wagging their finger at me right now. <laughs> but we absolutely loved it. So, you know, I don't care. <laughs> but now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you for being here today. Your love, time and support always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love.